All right, welcome to part two of our lecture series in glycogen biosynthesis and metabolism. In this next section, we will take a closer look at the enzymes required for glycogenesis or the synthesis of glycogen. The process of glycogenesis requires the activity of several enzymes. Some of these we've already discussed, including the hexokinase that phosphorylates the six prime hydroxyl of glucose and the phosphoglucomutase that converts glucose 6-phosphate to the glucose 1-phosphate isomer. In this section, we will discuss the remaining four enzymes and their role in glycogen biosynthesis. The key enzyme required is glycogen synthase, GS. This enzyme is the key regulatory step in the process, and we've already seen how insulin signaling upregulates the activity of this enzyme by inhibiting phosphorylation by the glycogen synthase kinase 3. Other effectors include allosteric binding of glucose 6-phosphate, which also increases the activity of the glycogen synthase. In a later section, we will also see that the hormone glucagon can also regulate the activity of the glycogen synthase through protein kinase A, pKa. In this situation, glycogen synthesis is downregulated and glycogen breakdown is amplified. Within glycogenesis, the glycogen synthase is responsible for building the majority of the main alpha-1,4 chain linkages. The glycogen synthase does require a primer of four to six glucose residues that are already linked together by alpha-1,4 bonds to begin synthesis. Glycogen synthase also cannot create the alpha-1,6 branches inherent to the core structure of glycogen. To build the glycogen main chain, glycogen synthase uses the glycogen primer plus a glucose that has been activated through binding to a molecule of uridine diphosphate, UDP, at the 1 position for its substrates. Upon completion of the linkage, the 1 position of the incoming UDP glucose is bonded with the 4 position of the nascent glycogen molecule, releasing the UDP as a leaving group. The formation of the UDP glucose is mediated by the UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. This enzyme utilizes glucose 1-phosphate and uridine triphosphate as substrates to generate UDP glucose and release inorganic phosphate. UDP glucose is then utilized by glycogen synthase to extend the main chain of glycogen by one glucose residue. In this reaction, the 4' hydroxyl group of the glycogen main chain attacks the anomeric carbon of the UDP glucose. The UDP functional group serves as a good leaving group following the formation of the alpha-1,4 bond. In a previous slide, we mentioned that glycogen synthase requires a glycogen primer of 4 to 6 glucose residues to begin adding new residues too. This primer is provided by the small docking protein, glycogenin. This protein is a homodimer that self-catalyzes glycosylation at amino acid tyrosine 194. In this reaction, the hydroxyl group of tyrosine mediates nucleophilic attack on the anomeric carbon of UDP glucose. Thus, glycogen is tethered to the reducing end of the glycogen molecule. The final enzyme, the glycogen branching enzyme, catalyzes the hydrolytic cleavage of an alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage and the subsequent inter- or intra-chain transfer of the non-reducing terminal fragment to the C6 hydroxyl position of the alpha-glucan. In this example, an interchain transfer is occurring. At the top of the scheme above the arrow, you can see that the glycogen branching enzyme transiently removes X number of glucose residues, usually around seven, from one linear glycogen chain, and then attaches it as an alpha-1,6 branch to the other chain. 
In this process, an additional non-reducing end is created, which can act as a primer site for glycogen phosphorylase, the main enzyme that breaks down glycogen. Thus, glucose residues can be released very quickly when needed. Overall, a summary of glycogenesis begins when glucose enters the cell through the GLUT4 transporter or similar family member. Hexokinase phosphorylates the glucose and traps it in the cell. Phosphoglucomutase then converts glucose 6-phosphate into glucose 1-phosphate. This substrate is utilized by UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase to generate UDP glucose. Glycogen synthase uses UDP glucose as a glucose donor to extend the alpha-1,4 chain of glycogen with more glucosyl residues. Note that a primer of at least four glucose residues must be attached to glycogenin to serve as a substrate for glycogen synthase. Finally, the branching enzyme transfers a chain of alpha-1,4 glucose residues, about seven, to the same or to a different glycogen chain to create an alpha-1,6 linkage. This occurs approximately every 12 to 16 residues.